Hello, welcome to lesson 10 of Mastering Java. Uh, here what we're going to do is begin to talk about a different kind of loop, and that's called the while loop. It's very common in Java. If you have any uh, experience programming in other languages such as C, then you will recognize the while loop and realize that it's basically the same thing. Um, I do want to tell you that the use of these different kinds of loops that we're going to learn here uh, in this lesson and in the next few lessons, um, a lot of the time you can use them interchangeably. So up until now we have learned how to use a for loop. So for instance, if you have an integer i that you have there, we've learned how to use a for loop and we've said it goes something like this. i is equal to 0, i is less than or equal to 10, i plus plus. And so that's how we've created or constructed the for loop. And so you see everything necessary in the for loop is, is, is given in order for this loop to execute 10 times. We have uh, the initialization, we'll set it equal to 1. We have the initialization of the variable to the initial value. Then we have the final value or the termination condition. We're running this loop all the time as long as i is less than or equal to 10. And the increment is also in there. So we're incrementing uh, the guy 10 times. And so we know that when we come into this for loop, because we set up the initial condition and we set up the final condition and we set up the increment right inside of the body of the for loop, we know that this loop is going to execute 10 times. The only reason it wouldn't is if, uh, uh, is if uh, I was, you know, pushed past 10 prematurely or if we had a break statement or something inside of there to push us out of that loop. Now let me uh, leave this up here and I will contrast that with what we call a while loop. Actually what I'll do is I'll comment this out and I'll just push it down and just leave it at the bottom of the screen just to remind you because you have a good amount of experience with the for loop. So we'll leave it there so you can look at it. Now we're going to talk about what happens in a while loop. So in a while loop it goes like this. You say uh, i is equal to 1. You have to set that initial condition outside of the loop. All right, and then you say while, let me go ahead and pull this up a little higher so you can see. The keyword is while, open a parenthesis, and you say while i is less than or equal to 10. Then you drop down here, open a curly, and push that down and get a closing curly brace. What's going on here is the initial condition is set outside of the while loop. The termination condition is right here inside the parentheses, and this loop will continue as long as i is less than or equal to 10. Another way to say that is this loop will continue while i is less than or equal to 10. So typically what you would have is system.out.println um, this, well, let's do it like this in, in quotations, this is loop number, and then we'll just put our variable here just so we can say loop number one, loop number two, or whatever. And so we'll put a semicolon, and then underneath that, the other thing you need to add for a while loop is you need to increment or, uh, or, or change the value of your variable. This is a functional while loop. It accomplishes essentially the same thing that we were trying to do down here with our uh, little example for a for loop. Notice how they're similar. We, uh, in the for loop, you define the initial condition of the variable inside the loop or in the initialization of the loop. For a while loop, you need to set the initial state of the variable outside the loop. The increment here for the for loop is happening right as we define the loop, so we know as we go through it's incrementing plus one each time. For the while loop, you need to do that yourself in the body of the loop, or else nothing's going to happen. Nothing will increment, and the loop will never stop, right? And then the termination condition, i less than or equal to 10, which is here in the middle of the for loop, that's actually what's up here, uh, the only thing up there for the while loop. So let's go ahead and uh, hit save and let's run this. And you can see this is loop number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right. Um, so that's kind of the point of the while loop. It's something, it's a different way to accomplish a similar task. Uh, and so you can accomplish almost all the time when you're trying to use a while loop for something, you could have used a for loop. Conversely, many times you're using a for loop. If you wanted to, you could use a while loop. They're just two different tools. Sometimes it makes a little more sense to use a while loop. Sometimes it makes a little more sense to use a for loop. And so those are just going to be things that you experience as you go through uh, your programming here. So the thing you need to make sure to understand is you define your variable outside the loop, you increment the variable inside the loop, your condition is going to continue to loop this guy while i is less than or equal to 10. It's only going to happen while that happens. Now one thing I want to point out uh, to you that you may not realize uh, right off the bat, 
um, because I'm going to compare it to the do while loop, which we're going to cover in the, in the next uh, couple lessons here. Uh, I want to point something out to you here. When we come through here, we set i is equal to 1, and we set this loop to occur while i is less than or equal to 10, right? So what this means is that depending on what's going on here, and the way I've got it set up now, you know that because i is 1, it's going to go loop through here. But depending on the value of i, this loop may never execute at all. For instance, if I go and set the loop um, equal to 12, if I set the initial variable equal to 12, this loop will never execute because it only happens when i is less than or equal to 10. In fact, if I save and run this guy, there's no output. So for a while loop, depending on how you've set things up, if you do it wrong, or if the value of your variable is such that this is not, this constraint is not met, then you may never loop through your loop at all. Right? Now that's going to be a little different to the do while loop later. I guess all I'm trying to just kind of get you to remember in the back of your mind as you learn this is that with the while loop, you may never execute the loop at all if the initial condition doesn't fit with what is in here. And that's going to be a little different for a, a loop that we have later. But the main takeaway here is you set your variable up, uh, you increment through, and then there you go. And so you have to have your termination condition and your increment condition. All right, so let's erase all of this and show you another quick example. We can do things with letters as well. We can have a character variable called letter, and then we can set that equal to A, right? And then we can, so we've initialized that, we can have a while letter is less than or equal to Z, then we can open this guy up, and then here we can have system.out.println, the current letter is, and then you just put whatever the current letter is that we're keeping track of, right? Now, again, you have to have an increment, so you do letter plus plus, which is letter is equal to letter plus one. Remember, for character variables, you can increment them just like integers. It's just that when you do that, you're, you're zooming down the alphabet one by one. So what happens here is we initially set the variable equal to capital A, and then we're saying let's execute this loop as long as the letter is less than or equal to capital Z. And then we print it out, the current letter is, whatever it is, and then we increment the letter. So as we go through this, we should increment this variable, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Eventually we get to Z, and after that the loop uh, stops. So let's go ahead and hit run there, and then we can see up here the current letter is A, B, C, and then you continue all the way down to Z, and then the loop stops. So while loops can be very useful with integers, with characters, um, and you know a lot of times you can accomplish the same thing with a for loop, but sometimes it makes a little more sense depending on the exact thing you're doing in your program to use a while loop. So what I'm going to encourage you to do now is go off to, um, to uh, the uh, exercises that we have and try to work them yourself, try to work it yourself to just get a little bit of practice with the while loop and then uh, continue on to the next section where we will continue learning about looping in Java.